Hi guys, I thought I'd share a few pistols from my collection with you guys and I think before long you'll start to see a theme starting to appear in this collection. I have here is a few of my SIGs. Um, these are a collection of SIGs that I picked up over the years and uh, I've been shooting SIGs for quite a while. Um, this here is actually my first SIG. It's a SIG P226. As all the guns you see sitting here are SIG P226s and 9mm. So you're starting to see a theme here. This is actually what started it and uh, this has been ongoing now over two decades. This is a West German produced SIG P226 9mm. As you can see here um, it has no rail. This is a pre-rail and this is a made in West Germany gun. This is actually the very first SIG I purchased in the late 1980s. Um, so I've been got a track record with these for over two decades and I gotta say I absolutely love them. Uh, are they the best handgun in the world? I wouldn't say that. Are they a good handgun? I would say yes. Does it have a very good track record? I would say at this point it does. Uh, what makes this 226 a little different from some of the newer models is the, is the lack of the rail. I don't think you can get a 226 with, without a rail. Um, and also the slide. There have been some revisions over the years. As, as time has progressed, there's been some uh, manufacturing changes and there's been some, uh, some material changes. Um, the early SIGs use a stamped uh, carbon steel slide. Now this slide here is made from a stamping. This is stamped out of a piece of carbon steel. And then the front section here is actually welded on and machined. Um, I'll ch challenge anybody to find any kind of welding. There is no signs that this is welded on, but this is made out of a, a stamped piece of steel. The front is welded on. Uh, the breech block fits into here and is held in with a pin. So this has a slightly different firing pin and also the extractor is not visible at all on the early SIGs. It's an internal extractor design. It's integral to the breech block. So these actually have a carbon steel stamp slide. Um, I think these actually shoot the best and these are the smoothest compared to the more modern SIGs with the stainless steel. It may just be perception on my part, but um, I believe it's about, it's a slightly lighter. So I have a little bit less reciprocating mass and I think the carbon steel in the original design uh, is just outstanding. There are some limitations to it. Um, the carbon steel is not as corrosion resistant as the new stainless steel and also the only caliber you could do this in was 9mm. So switching to the milled stainless slides later on gave them the ability to offer more calibers and uh, a little more environmental protection. Now these are not the original grips obviously the original grips were black checkered uh, this is a set of more modern uh, G10 grips. I gotta say the G10 grips are extremely nice. Uh, they're extremely strong, no flex, uh, well-made, machined, fit very well. So this is a set of uh, G10 grips on this West German from the late 80s. Uh, fantastic gun. Uh, I've had to change a few springs in it due to age. Um, so, you know, other than that, I really haven't had to do much other than springs and. Uh, and sights. This is running a set of uh, three dot tritium night sights and I've changed the sights on this. Uh, this might be the third set of sights. But uh, we're talking, you know, late 80s, like 1988. Kind of dating myself there. Uh, I was introduced to these um, in the late 80s and uh, by some gentlemen who had access to, to whatever they wanted and uh, I, I just absolutely fell in love with this. I really liked the design where it's just a uh, double action, single action, um, no safeties. Uh, it's a simple decocker. You have your slide lock, your decocker, mag release. Basically, this gun has not changed much since its inception. Um, they do sport a rail now, and um, there have been a few minor changes. Um, the spring on this side, on the uh, trigger bar, they've got a more modern design spring. There's been a few things like that. Nothing outrageously different. Uh, the locking blocks were uh, slightly different and slightly different per caliber. Now the locking blocks are all the same regardless of what caliber, but they're still interchangeable and almost all the parts for this um, would fit in a, in a new SIG today. Um, this did not come with a uh, 
short reset trigger. I don't remember when that first became available, but uh, I've since added that to all my SIGs had the short reset trigger. An absolute must. Some of the higher end SIGs come with that, and I believe it should come with all SIGs because I think some of the SIGs get a bad rap on the trigger, the ones that don't have the, the short reset. Um, if you got 50 bucks in 10 minutes, uh, well worth your time. But this is what started the, the 226 for me. Uh, 9 millimeter was a, a choice I made early on when I was a less experienced shooter. I shot 9 millimeter better than I did 45. So I went opted to go with a, a 40 uh, 9 millimeter gun and uh, I shot that better. And then the fact that I fell in love with the SIG and that's what led me to it was the caliber. I was good at shooting 9, you know, because I had less experience. Now I could probably shoot any of the calibers equally well. But uh, 20 years ago, uh, I shot nine better than anything else, and then the, the SIG was available, and the two of them was just a, a match. It just felt right to me. So this is my West German produced uh, SIG 226 and 9mm with a stamped steel slide. The next uh, one I have here, and is a workhorse uh, for me here, is a uh, German produced uh, SIG 226 and 9mm. This one also has a stamped steel slide. It's real evident here because you can see the flat on the top and then you can see the, the breech block where it fits in, in the stamping. Uh, so this runs a high carbon stamp seal slide, same way the front's welded on, the breech block's set and pinned. Um, it runs the internal ex extractor and um, it's also got a set of G10 grips. Um, but you can see here, this later design is actually running the SIG rail, which is not a true Picatinny rail on, on this model. It's more, it's rounded instead of flat, but it will accept uh, almost all lights and stuff will fit on this. Um, this one actually is running a, uh, a threaded barrel with a tritium uh, suppressor sights. So the sights are high enough to uh, give me a sight picture over the can. And uh, point of aim and point of impact, even with the can off, um, doesn't seem to be any difference. Running the taller sights, uh, point of aim, point of impact are still the same. So this is my uh, German produce. This was an all matching number gun. Um, the German ones seem to have uh, serial numbers on the slide, the barrel, the frame, they have proof marks, where the American guns I don't think go through quite the, the rigorous inspection process as the German guns do. So this is my uh, German produced 226 and it's in a setup to uh, run a suppressor which the SIG does very well. Um, it's a good good host for a suppressor. Also on these, I have ran just about every bit of ammunition you can get commercially available from uh, 115 grain to 147. Whether it's 115s, 124s, or 147s, um, standard pressure plus Ps, uh, these seem to run all of them equally well. So they're not real finicky on the ammunition. They don't like a particular weight. Um, they'll run the cheap 115s if that's all you can get. Uh, they run the 124s well, even the 147s. So they're not real finicky. Um, they'll eat just about anything you can feed in them. But this is my uh, German uh, produced P226 with a stamped carbon slide. So I have two of these with a stamped carbon slide, one West German and one German made. So I, I feel pretty fortunate to have these. Um, the third one, 226, in my uh, lineup here is a workhorse. Um, this one and and this German made produce one are two guns that go to class a lot. One of these two, if I'm in a class or I'm training, it's either this or this. These two are the workhorses of my collection. So these go through quite a bit of round count. Um, this is running an elite slide, so it has the front cocking serrations. It's running the tritium night sights. Um, it has a short reset trigger. Um, it's got the standard SIG black grips. Um, this has the milled slide. This is um, the third generation extractor. This is what's known as the large extractor. It's an external extractor and it's large. The second generation extractor on the SIGs was a smaller extractor externally also. Very similar to a Glock except um, all access in the front. There's no back plate to take off to remove the spring and plunger. Um, a little simpler to change. You only need a flat blade screwdriver. To change the extractor, this you need a punch and a hammer, and this you know this runs two small springs. We only ran a, a lo single long spring, 
But this is the latest in uh, extractor design from SIG, is the long external. Uh, these have a one-piece milled stainless slide. So these are gives you more flexibility when it comes to calibers. You can get the 226s now in 9mm, 357 SIG, and 40 Smith & Wesson. So you have a little more options with the stainless. They're able to uh, mill them out, and uh, you're able to uh, get different calibers. Plus, they're more corrosion resist resistant because they are stainless steel. And this one also has a standard uh, SIG accessory rail. So nothing real spectacular here. Uh, standard capacity on these, on a SIG 9mm, is 15 rounds. Um, there are magazines going from 15 to 20 rounds in the standard capacity range uh, factory magazines. But uh, this is one of my uh, workhorse guns. Uh, some of the other changes that have come with time, I've noticed over the years, is some of the manufacturing processes. Um, we went from stampings to millings. Um, some of the parts, like the trigger and some other parts, went investment casting. Um, I think that's just keeping up with the times on how things are produced um, from stampings to millings and, and from uh, machining to investment casting as the, as the couple decades have passed. Um, but the gun itself has re relatively remained unchanged. It's pretty much the same gun. So this is uh, one of my workhorse class guns. I really like the front cocking serrations. When I'm doing a press check, it just it really does make it a little bit easier. It's kind of nice. Um, but just a fantastic, uh, reliable, good shooter. Also, like I said, with the short reset trigger. Um, my newer SIGs that did have investment cast triggers in them uh, were, have been replaced with uh, original uh, machine triggers. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the newer designs, I, but some of the stuff I'm kind of uh, old school on, I just kind of like it because that's what I'm, I'm used to. But uh, I haven't had any issues, and I've had no issues with the latest extractor design. I've had no issues with the first extractor design or the second extractor design. Uh, they've all worked ex ex extremely well. I think just uh, the manufacturing processes over time and technology have changed slightly. So this is my other 226. So it's one of my uh, class guns. And then I got a couple of them. I got to admit that I, uh, I tend to baby a little bit. I have this 226 here, and you'll notice... It looks a little different. It's sporting a uh, Cerakoted frame and factory FDE grips. Uh, it's got uh, the front cocking serrations. It's also set up for uh, suppressor work. It's got the threaded barrel and uh, tritium uh, suppressor sights. Uh, the SIG barrels are metric. They're a 13.5 to 1 left-hand thread. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for a can, you're going to need a metric left-hand thread. Uh, but these do work very well with suppressors, no, no issues. Uh, this one here, besides having the Cerakoted frame, it has a short reset trigger. And this model has the extended beaver tail also. But you can see it's just the, the Cerakoted frame with the two-tone look. It's absolutely stunning. Um, the extended beaver tail, you can see here compared to a regular uh, SIG, just has the beaver tail is extended out a little bit. Feels pretty much the same in your hand. It's more uh, aesthetically looking, a little different, but uh, it functions pretty much the same. And this is another uh, one-piece milled stainless slide, so with the large extractor. But it's in the, in the flat darker Cerakote. Um, just another one of my SIGs. This, like I said, has the standard SIG rail. And then we'll get to the last one I have here in the 226, which uh, is five, five 226s, I know. And then I have this one here, which I kind of tend, I, I admit, I kind of baby. This is, uh, you'll see right off the get-go here on the front on this rail, you see how flat that is? That just did give away that uh, we're looking at a, a Mark 25. So this is a 9mm uh, SIG Mark 25 226. But it looks a little different. This one's sporting the factory OD green grips, and it has an OD green uh, Cerakoted slide. It's also running the 3 dot tritium night sights. I tend to keep all my pistols having the exact same sight, so no matter which gun I pick up, when I, when I you know, present it to the target, I always have the exact same sight picture. And these all have the exact same trigger, same uh, short reset trigger, so my trigger pull is the same, the reset's the same, and my sight picture is the same. Um, so I train almost 100% with uh, the SIG 226, that's the pistol of choice that I've been training with. And, uh, getting more serious with lately, but I've been shooting this gun for, you know, 
two decades now, and I gotta say, it, it has been extremely reliable. You know, these are uh, an aluminum frame uh, gun with a steel slide. Um, I really like the fact that there's no external safeties. It's basically, uh, you know, present, pull the trigger, and uh, it's good to go. You know, first shots, double action. It's a little stiff, about 10 pounds, but it's not that big a deal. If you uh, train with it, you can be just as accurate on that double double action shot as you are with that, that second uh, single action shot. It's much more uh, light and crisp, and the short reset, it makes it really easy to get fast follow-up shots. But you can see this here is a, a Mark 25. Um, it's a little bit different though because it's running the, the OD green grips, the Cerakoted OD green frame, and this is running a, a large extractor uh, stainless slide. But other than that, it's it's pure Mark 25, just a little bit uh, dressed up with the OD green. Um, I'm kind of old school. I like to, I still like the OD green, but this has the true uh, Picatinny rail. You can see right here, it's a quite a bit. It's noticeable once you get them together, the profile of the rail where you have the SIG rail and you have the true Picatinny rail. Both work equally well. So I have the, the Mark 25 and the OD green. Then I have the extended beaver tail and the FDE set up for suppressors. And then I have uh, just a simple, basically simple 226, except this has the elite slide with the front cocking serrations. Like I said, this is one of my class guns. This one will tend to get extremely filthy and run very hard. Um, but that's what it's for. It's uh, one of my class guns. And then I have uh, my other class gun, which I really, really love. I just absolutely love shooting this one. This is uh, the German produced uh, stamp carbon slide. This is just one so smooth, maybe because it's got, it's so well broken and I, and I lubricate it so well. I do run the grease on the rails and oil and everything else, and uh, I tend to run my guns really, really wet. I've had no issues running them wet. Um, they'll dry out as you, uh, as you shoot, so uh, my guns are always uh, extremely wet. And this one is also set, set up to uh, run a can. And then what started the whole saga here was the original uh, West German. So we go from West Germany uh, during you know Cold War, Reunification of Germany, then we have them German produced, and then uh, the last three are uh, US produced, uh, later versions of the 226. Um, do I carry a 226 for concealed carry? Uh, no, I don't. I train 100% all the time with the 226, and I know people would say, well, then you should train, you know, you should carry what you train with, which I agree. What I carry with, I'll show you real quickly. What I carry is a SIG 239, which is basically a smaller version of the 226. This is a little easier to conceal. It's a single stack 9mm. Um, it's very, very similar here. You can see the gun I, I train with all the time and the gun I conceal carry. Um, they both have the short reset trigger. Um, uh, so the trigger pull is the same. Double action, single action. The grip's virtually the same. I'm running the same G10 grip. I'm running the exact same uh, sights, so my sight picture's the same. So I have a slightly smaller barrel, slightly lower capacity, but all the control services are identical. So I don't really have any training scars because everything um, control service-wise is identical. So that's why I, I carry this because it's just it's physically easier to carry and carry all day and, and conceal. So this is what I carry. Um, this is what I would like to carry, but carrying it concealed is uh, realistically not as easy as you would think but this is actually ideal for uh, for concealing but these are my uh, SIG 226's um, fantastic gun there's a lot of good options out there nowadays these do have a track record that uh, some of the newer guns don't have but I imagine they will have in time but uh, SIG has a the 226 has been a fantastic uh, uh, workhorse for the past two decades so can't really go wrong with one of these but there's a lot of other good choices out there this is uh, this is by no means uh endorsing this like this is what you should have this is what i enjoy and what i have and and and, and fits me and, and i shoot well what you shoot well may vary but i'm just sharing a glimpse of part of my collection of uh some of the stuff that i i enjoy thanks for watching